Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Dota Pit. We are here in our final day of the European Closed Qualifier. Of course, a lot more Dota Pit to come. But tonight, we will have one of these qualifier teams determined. We're going to go through the two different semifinals as well as the grand finals all tonight. So it's going to be a long night, Durka. We're going to have a lot of fun. There's some interesting teams here, honestly. Elements. Yeah. They've, uh, they've been kind of <laughs> hit and miss, honestly. <laughs> that series was... Uh, like. I mean, they definitely... I think we both agreed. Like, we went into that game three and we both agreed that Elements was the stronger team. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that they lost a game in the first place is uh, a little bit questionable. Well, they were also in the Gigabyte Challenge the other night. Uh, sorry, MSI Dragon Battle, not Gigabyte Challenge. Uh -huh. And they didn't get through to the Grand Final, which kind of surprised me. I, I can't remember who they got knocked out by, but they, they didn't make it through, which you know, I, I kind of felt Screen Squad, you know, they're kind of the mainstay of Gigabyte Challenge, Iso Cup, MSI Dragon Battle. They always get to, like, semifinals, Grand Finals, but uh, not this time around. They lost to... Team Eeriness, yeah, a check team, that's it, yeah. Remaining. Did you cast this game? I'm pretty sure I did. I can't remember, it was Five a long night last night. Remaining. But that th that check team is like the remnants of SGC, uh, Hranich's old team. Reserve yeah. Got time. like Saini and uh, another bloke, I can't remember his name. Uh-huh. But they, they, did, they did pretty decently. Up against Elements, who went for their typical, we're going to run at you and hope we win kind of strat. Which honestly has worked for them a lot in the past, and now you look at them with a Wisp Chaos Knight. Yeah, and it's nice definitely... <laughs> It definitely fits their playstyle. Uh, I I like it just because, for me, it's the only way that they're gonna be able to beat Arcade Power Rangers is if they just go and pick up like something like this with Chaos Knight that's a little bit off the wall, but is also run at you status. And now, Power Rangers do have plenty of heroes to deal with early aggression. Shadow Fiend comes online relatively quickly. Gyrocops are obviously one of the most. Uh, early team fighting carries Witch that you can Doctor. get your hands on and then tusk to the night stalker is i would say equal when it comes to um fighting power just tusk is a little bit more consistent you could say uh which doctor now picked up for power rangers in response against the chaos knight wis great support hero you can't get your hands on the winter wyvern or the dazzle invoker. so i think Witch doctor makes a lot of sense but the invoker the general invoker. invoker we're gonna see it once again just checking we have a delay <laughs> Toby, yeah. Toby touches things. And yeah, 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 don't yeah. believe me. I, I checked it. I was like, uh, is there a delay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, speaking of the Tusk, this hero can both play aggressively and defensively. Uh, defensively, you know, like level one, Ice Shard's great at blocking off Rune Spawn. So uh -huh. you take that bounty rune straight away at level one. But then with a the Snowball, sure, Night Stalker can run at you. He's got great base attack damage. Reserve He's got time. good attack animation. And that Void with the first Knight and his Hunter. He can charge people down, but if you don't have a level in silence, dealing with heroes like Witch Doctor with a Voodoo Restoration, and Gyro is going to be pretty much out-leveling. Why? Uh, what I guess is support Night Stalker here. That's what they've usually run. Mm -hmm. uh, elements. So I think last hero is going to be an offlaner for them, but there's very little defensiveness in their team. You know, Wisp is the one hero that kind of gives you that sustain, while Arcade have a a really well balanced draft. I feel. Remaining. Especially if you if we see the SF go for like a mech build. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, with the ban away of the Ancient Apparition, I don't think there's much to stop an early mech on the SF because Radiant he's Radiant side. Uh, I don't know. Elements are going to be hard-pressed trying to actually get that proper initiation without just losing the team fight outright. Because even if they do manage to like catch the SF, they're always going to be those responses. They're mm. going to be in danger of cask. It's kind of interesting. Ulti. Darkseer has been left through the entire pick and ban phase. And both teams could actually run a Darkseer here. Ten seconds you could have Darkseer remaining. for Arcade, you could run Tusk, Witch Doctor in your support roles, have DS offlane, that, that wouldn't Five be too bad. Remaining. But equally, Elements, they need something to really bring this lineup together. Invoker would love a Darkseer Reserve vacuum time. just to get that Meteor Defting Blast and bring all the enemies into one spot. Oh, apparently we only have two best of threes today. My bad. Oh, really? No, yeah, on, on our calendar final. and everything, there was a there was a final, but there there is no final um, because both the finalists are going to be moving on. Okay, so because yeah, there's two different Dota pick groups, that that makes sense. On, but yeah, on our calendar, <laughs> it's like 6 p.m. until 2 a.m. Let's have fun with this, Cap. I was like, okay, yeah, I was getting ready for the long haul. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, I guess I didn't have to stop for that donor then. I kind of looked at it and thought, right, two best of fives. Here we go. Or like <laughs> three best of threes. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, okay, so Power Rangers now. Uh, I, I believe you said that they still need an offlaner, right? Or 
I okay, because I wasn't sure whether or not the Tusk would be their off lane, and they Cheshire Cat has played a lot of Tusk, and J4 mm -hmm. does like that kind of greedy support, mm -hmm. which I feel the Earthshaker is going to be. You know, he, he loves yeah. he loves his Bane getting an early Glimmer Cape, but sometimes Witch Doctor with a fast Ags. But yes, his Blink Dagger timings timings are usually pretty impeccable, and he's a direct counter to the Chaos Knight in yeah. any uh, in many ways. I really like this. So for me, I was like the only off laner that I would have re valued really more than the Tusk and rotate the Tusk into the four position would have been maybe the Clockwork um, just for his, you know, innate lockdown versus a melee hero like Chaos Knight. It's, I, I, I think, a really good way to protect those heroes like Shadow Fiend or Gyrocopter. Um, but the the Earthshaker, I think, makes a lot more sense than that. will obviously mean our Tusk is in the offlane position, most likely. Are we going to see Darkseid just ignored completely? I mean... Is there any reason that you want the Darkseer on Elements right now? You're going up against a Gyrocopter, so it's not that laning phase that's super strong. You could run DS Nightstalker dual off lane. It's true. For me, um, the, the the laning phase, like I don't think you threaten the Gyrocopter enough, and then the you don't have that much AOE to go with the Darkseer. You only have the Invoker. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, guess I, so. I I would actually like a Clockwork for Elements here. Great hero versus Earthshaker. If you get the fast blade mail, it's incredible at threatening both Gyrocopter and SF. Cogs into Sunstrike. Cogs into Sunstrike is possible. W did we see General go the Exort Invoker? Invoker yeah. yeah, we did. So I was talking about him remain. usually going for the Cross Wex, and I think it would have been better in that game that we saw, but here, Five when you've got Relocate, remain. the good stun from Chaos Knight, Night Stalker right. can set things up, and you're, mm -hmm. you're damn right, Clockwork does set up pretty nicely for this. I mean, e even early on, if you get the Witch Doctor caught in the Cogs, right? Clock hits level three or something to in battery assault if it goes for that like old school build. Yeah, the Sunstrike could really take apart J4. But it does look like it's Cheshire Cat playing Earthshaker, big num on the Tusk, and J4 will be on that greedier Witch Doctor. I I want to see an Exort Invoker just because we know the General has done it before, and I want to see if it can be successful. Mm -hmm. Because obviously we only see Quaswex Invokers. If this was any other team, we'd be saying, yeah, it's going to be Quaswex Invoker, 100%. Um, but solely because it's elements, I haven't seen too many teams experiment with the Exert Invoker, and I think it's still possibly valid. You just have to have the re right uh, team composition around it, which you uh, pointed out remaining. can be possible here with the uh, elements lineup. Yeah, and then he offers Five you that added remaining. potential of sli uh, split pushing if you go for the double Forge Spirits play. But when Exalt Invokers have been picked up more recently, it's mainly being like the max exhort where you just get the full damage output from Sunstrike and Meteor mm -hmm. rather than going for the like 4041 which we used to see from Dendi and the like. Alright, well. And Clockwork down a bottom lane, what's he up against? Witch Doctor, Gyro and Tusk. It's, it's not going to be a easy. Tough lane. Yeah. Really not going to be easy. I, I think that gives um, another point to the Gyrocopter pickup because other offlaners or Big Greedier wouldn't be able to stand up against this kind of combination that uh, Power Rangers have. Like if you wanted a Spirit Breaker or something, it could maybe give you the initiation tools you wanted, but mm -hmm. it's just not going to last against this lane. Yeah, Clockwork and Earthshaker are the only real offlaners uh, that can actually block the creep wave and make sure that you do get levels no matter how tough the lane is. Do you think we'll see Big Num or J4 actually moving towards mid lane early on? Because you know it's it's been the mainstay of play nowadays to have one of your supports sit mid for a little while and really give, especially a Shadow Fiend, the first wave at least. Yeah. So maybe the Clockwork can get up to level two a little bit faster if the Witch Doctor goes and sits mid. Because a general level one Invoker, you know, he <laughs> he doesn't do that much. Okay, so in in your mind, I I think they are gonna roam mid, but in your mind, what what are the pros and cons between Earthshaker offlane and Tusk offlane? Because uh, Power Rangers are actually gonna be running Shushu Cat on the the Earthshaker. I think early on Invoker like Invoker has no escape mechanism, uh, mechanism very early on, right? So the Tusk mm -hmm. roaming is gonna give them much more aptitude to actually gank onto the Invoker, mm -hmm. whereas. If he's off lane, you know you're missing out on experience. It, it's always that toss up. Tusk and Earthshaker have that similar kind of, uh, kind of back and forth thinking yeah. behind them. Where if I roam, if I control rune, if I move mid, I'm gonna miss out on this wave. Gonna miss out maybe you know a, a bit of pressure on the off on the safe lane or the carry. And we'd be stalling up significantly the uh, the blink dagger for the Earthshaker if he was roaming, unless he just did an all star job of getting kills. 
So with him running in the off lane, the faster Blink Dagger, as we said, that's a pretty good counter to the Chaos Knight. Are they running Chaos Knight West mid? That's something that we don't oh. really talk about. Yeah, that, it looks that, like Invoker's heading top, actually. That actually makes a lot of sense because they're facing up against an SF and they that Power Rangers don't actually have a good support. That Like, they have good roaming heroes. Both Earthshaker and Tusk are good roaming to mid, but they're not good laning mid heroes. You know, right. like, such such as the Wisp is, such as heroes like yeah. Lich or Skyrath Mage or like, those kind of heroes. Wish Doctor does okay, but not until... Like, level 1 cask is okay, but not good or excellent or anything. You, know, mm -hmm. you need that level 2 cask to really annoy the Wisp Chaos Knight. I don't yeah. think it's really going to deter or stop any aggressive plays from them. And then you'd be left with a Gyrocopter Tusk bottom lane, which um, isn't bad, but clockwork it's not going to be able to zone the Clockwork out entirely. Yeah, clockwork could maybe have used that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Look at Clock already. He's got armor. He's got a stat shield. Our man going to start actually breaking down the trees to build up these stacked camps as well. All right, well, we'll see how this goes. Arcane Power Rangers is going to be starting off with the top rune here. Uh, elements spreading themselves all around the map right now. Do you think they could take a level one fight? I don't think they can. Uh, you have a Wisp and you have um, an Invoker. Neither one of those heroes are good at level one. Meanwhile... They have no damage. Like the, the, the thing is, they might have tanky heroes and sustain, but they have no mm -hmm. damage, right? Yeah. Whereas Witch Doctor, Tusk, Earthshaker, Gyro, even if Gyro's down the bottom lane, they'll get double bounty rune. Yeah, you're right. Elements do not walk into that level one. Fight. I feel like that was pretty obvious that uh, you should. I, I always feel like on tire side, if you don't have the level one advantage, you should never go top rune. Because top rune is a lot harder to judge where the, the heroes are at, right? Yeah. They could just all be up on this cliff and you have no way of knowing and they just stream down and kill you at level one. You start going for the bounty rune. Yeah, you never have, have the high ground advantage there. Usually bottom rune, you at least get some sort of intel of what's going on, or you're also there with your offlaner potentially, so that made a, a bit bit better fight, perhaps. I was wondering here with Bignum actually waiting behind, if they go for like a level 1 kill onto the Wisp. He's already half HP, but Barash went for the Necromastery level 1. I feel like if he went for Razor's level 1, they could try and kill, but they're going to go anyway. Yeah, they're going to be able to catch RMN with a snowball, and one hit is enough to finish him off, and... Our Chaos Knight, because he went for the early level of Reality Rift, really couldn't do anything in that fight. A if he actually had the Chaos Bolts, he could have maybe stunned the Tusk underneath the tower and gotten a return kill. But as it is, he was spamming out, like, fake spamming Reality Rift, and he's actually going to go into Barash now, but Still again, no stun. without the stun, they can't really threaten the, the SF. It's just a case, really, like, Iron has bottle. It's expending mana, which you're going to be gaining back anyway. It's just that little efficient play where, you know, you're dealing damage for no cost, really, except for the cooldown. Mm -hmm. That's fine for him. Now, screen on this Night Stalker. He's currently in a very passive role, which is kind of weird to see from him. He's always played that up-in-your-face, aggressive play style. Boom, there mid. They're still trying to go in, but Voodoo Restoration's up for J4. At this point in time, I think they have to wait till level 3 and just go for the all-out kill on SF or Witch Doctor. Because otherwise, they're just going to start losing this lane to raise harassment. Maybe with a good rune, RMN is going to find one now and just going to be the bounty rune. What have we got bot? Oh, uh, a hasted tusk. Here we go again. So even though there's a Wisp mid and there's good aggressive displacement... Oh, they no beat it out. One. Barish stepped forward, so he is going to be gone on, but he has more than enough healing to be able to get through, and it's Bignum who starts going on to RMN, blocks him out with the uh, shards, and will be able to get that kill. Bignum can't go for the courier. He's not feeling courageous enough. <laughs> oh, I, don't know I think it would be worth it, though. I mean, oh, if you sure. had to trade your life for the courier. I mean, you're hasted up like you just picked up that fresh haste. I, I would have gone for it, but I don't know. He just weighed the risk-reward in his head and thought, eh, they've already delivered what they wanted. It's not fully worth going for that courier kill. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Elements won't really need uh, a courier necessarily anyway. But right there is the issue with this lane. You know, they've got aggressive displacement where they can go forward and pull someone back into the arms of the Chaos Knight. Mm -hmm. But if they're in a situation where they have to back out or disengage, they can't. They don't have anything that can blink away and really get out of these tough situations. It's just down to tanking up, manning up, really, with the CK Wisp and dealing with what you've got. 
And maybe now the SF's gone on again, but Witch Doctor's still sticking around, and Barrage just isn't taking enough damage until... Oh, the that cast barely comes out in time, and now he's going to be able to bottle up and provide the turnaround. Tusk Snowball. Tusk, no he mana. doesn't have enough mana for it. Well, actually, he had a Mango. If he really wanted to try for it, he could have. CK's quick with the boots, though. 427 moves people. Oh, they're actually going for it now. RMN's going to be the target here. They do have enough damage to kill him if they could just keep RMN in place, but unfortunately, the Chaos Knight interrupted that one, and Big Num will go down. I can't believe they actually uh, went for that dive so late into it. Yeah, I, SF wasn't there. He went to deny himself to the neutral camp, and he's like, right, I'm out of here, boys. I'm not I'm not getting involved in this. They went in, they thought Chicken Cat maybe could offer a little more damage than he did. Well, oh, ZXC! Oh, he didn't get the block off with okay. the cast, but still. It uh, looks like it's going to be good enough for him to survive. In fact, they're going to try and make the turnaround here. Screen is so damn fast. And oh, he's trying to hide in the trees right now. The Wisp Orb doesn't scout him out, doesn't hit him. He will oh, now, though. They're going to go farther up. They see him now. Gyrocopter's done for, and that's going to be a kill for the Wisp. Big commitment. Three-man rotation down to bot with a TP scroll. Oh, that Night Stalker. But killing off the Gyro, I think that's fully worth it. You know that his level six is coming soon. He's level five and three quarters or whatever it is. You don't want him reaching that critical mass where he can be the one TPing mid and actually turning around these ganks onto the SF. Right. Because Barash has died once in this aggressive lane. And he may be dying again. The cast is going to come out. It does bounce over to the Chaos Knight. That's perfect. Double races go down, and maybe they can get a turnaround kill. Gyrocopter's right in the middle of everything here, but the Creep Wave is too. He gets out the Rocket Barrage and will be able to finish off the Wisp as well as the Chaos Knight, thanks in part to that Flat Cannon. That high the last shot. Just giving Vision of our men backing up. Even during the night time. And now Gyro hits level 6. He's got cooldown available. So killing the Gyrocopter turns out not to be worth it at all as he revives for the perfect time to TP mid and provide the turnaround. Varas still has a, a tiny stack. Yeah, he's got a couple of little stacks for him to bring himself back into this. But Yoku on this Chaos Knight, yep, straight back into the thick of things. He's not slowing down whatsoever. His level 6 is going to come in soon. Uh, Shashir Cat as the offlane Earthshaker. We haven't actually talked about this lane at all. It's a pretty passive lane. He's been just throwing out Fishers for some CS. The Invoker, it's a Quaswex Invoker with uh, Phase Boots and is going to be Radiant's going the Orchid route. Pretty, pretty standard stuff. That's going to be a quick Orchid as well. Can we be decent against all these heroes, I guess, even though they are a little bit tanky if Witch Doctor can get Voodoo Restoration out first, but Shadowfiend being as far behind as he is, and Gyrocopter usually going into, like, the stats build. Oh, Tusk. He's going to try and block him out. That's a nice Ice Shards, but still a two-second stun, and they will have the damage. No, Snowball goes out. Now the Gyrocopter's here. Even if they do kill the Tusk, it's going to be well worth it, it seems, for the Gyrocopter, or maybe not. There's too many heroes here. He needs more backup, a two-second stun, but he's still inside the cogs. The Chaos Knight can't get to him. He almost finished off ZXC. The tower will take it, but still, Yoku's quite low, and J4 is going to come in with the cast. Maybe they can kill, still get this kill. It's bouncing back and forth. Turn around, four-second stun, and Yoku will be able to get out. That's Radiant's fine for the clockwork. He hits level 6, attack. 10 seconds until he respawns, and then I guess he TP to a lane and look for a kill somewhere. SF, prime target, boots not available just yet, so getting that hook into cogs is going to be perfectly fine for you. Especially if uh, Screen can join him. Clockwork. He's got the TP. Not sure where he's going just yet. They do have this nice aggressive ward, which does see part of the SF whenever he's going to be going to this medium camp. But it looks like he's going to walk out to lane for now. Hold on to his TP in case it's needed in the mid lane. Look at how much emphasis they're putting on this mid lane. High ground ward is up just as the other one expires as well. This Radiant team just doesn't want the Chaos Knight to get out of control. And Screen has started that nice roaming movement, which we kind of expect from him as well. Interesting. Is that he actually moves back down towards bot lane? Uh, I really like to see Clockworks when they hit level 6. Unless you're, like, unless you're in a lane you're dominating, right? Yeah. Actually move off the lane to look for kills, because you can't kill Gyro with a hookshot. Yeah, maybe, certainly Maybe not. with this wraparound, though. 
Well, they can definitely catch a support. Cheshire Cat's going to be the target. Big Num does have a snowball if he wants to try and make the play. Does bring the Earthshaker in and goes for screen on the side. But the Wiss is also here, and they might be able to catch multiple heroes. Cheshire Cat, a nice four-man Fisher there, but he's still going to be run down. The SF is here, though. Yoku's going to go onto him, a four-second stun, but the Gyrocopter is able to provide some support. Slows him down with the ultimate, is able to claim one, and looks like he's going to be able to catch RMN as well. Now the Night Stalker goes down, and... Arcade Power Rangers, they just surrounded their own jungle elements. Dove too deep? Way, way, way too deep there. What a that kill on Cheshire Cat. I mean, okay, you take a couple of hundred gold off him, but he's still fine with this. He's got his Tranquil Boots in a hundred. He'll start building up to Blink Dagger. This isn't the stage in the game where you're looking at Earthshaker and thinking, right, he's near his core item, we need to kill him. You know, you think about Spectre Radiance, Anti-Mage getting Battle Fury, Earthshaker 20 minutes in when he's nearly at the Blink, you think, right, we've got to shut him down, and stop him getting that big team fight item. Now's not the time. It's just not worth diving and giving up that many kills for him. Chaos Knight was spotted out in the uh, in the jungle, so he's not going to be able to find the opening with that haste rune, and that's going to be pretty unsuccessful rotations from Power Rangers as they have three heroes bottom. What is General up to? He's still sticking around up here and has yet to TP to a lane. He's top of net worth barely, just overtakes the gyrocopter there. It's a thing. Invoker, Quaswix Invoker, when you get Orchid, is, I think, unbeatable in 1v1 scenarios. Like, nobody else can actually match that. Yeah. But it's still going to be, uh, it's still going to be a little while till he actually picks up that item, so... Need some time to farm. The Fisher's going to be able to slow down Yoku, but the Fisher also blocks out. They do have the ultimate out. RMN! Oh, wow, they're actually going to be able to save Yoku. That was off the back of, like, what, 10 HP? He dodges the final hit from SF with Phantasm. That was insane. That was almost just like, like an ultimate that was completely wasted. He could have just died instantly afterwards, but... Had the right read, dodged the hit, got them wand off. And our man came in with a tether heel. Yeah. And in the meantime, look at top, General. He gets his name on the board. There we go, a tower down for him, ten minutes in. He's he is... Given free reign up here. He's way ahead when it comes to net worth. Like, there's so much fighting with the rest of Power Rangers that... They're dipping a little bit behind this Invoker, who's uh, about to hit that 5k marker. Tis oh, this Tornado, EMP, General. Kind of lackluster performances, Radiant's I would say, on the Invoker lately. Yeah, we saw the Exhort uh, play from him the other day. Good job. There's no Tusk to save Cheshire Cat this time around, J4. Oh no, there is going to be a Tusk! He managed to get Cheshire Cat. The Cogs, they'll still be able to finish him off, but the cast bounces between the two of them. A one for two. Well worth the life of Cheshire Cat's Earthshaker. That cast placement was so perfect. It allows the double raise to come in right between the two heroes as well. But again, diving for this Earthshaker. Okay, you're slowing down the blink a little bit here and there. He's always going to find space and time to catch up on this. Now, General is making a little rotation towards mids. Barash has come back Radiant from like a 0 2 0 deficit to being 1 2 and 5. Those 5 assists definitely helping him get himself back up and running here as he's third in net worth. He can always dive into the jungle, dip a little bit into there to bring himself ahead. And Chaos Knight Wisp, They're already looking forward for this. Top lane is just Radiant's left completely unattended. General knows it's too risky to push hard up on that tier 2. And they're also going to smoke by their own tier 2. So maybe go for a tower down the bottom lane. Are they just are they just hunting Cheshire Cat? No. No, they're going to wrap around on mid. It seems there's like some personal vendetta between yeah. this Elements team and the Earthshaker. Let's kill, kill Cheshire Cat over and over again as much as we can. Well, Barish is definitely going to be a great pickup. He starts threatening the ultimate. Uh, they will throw everything they have to be able to get this kill. Yoku is the one who actually picks it up this time around. So that slows down the mech. He had some decent stacks to be able to get uh, recover some of his net worth. But it's still going to be uh, a long time coming if Elements could actually control this middle lane now. They're going to try and take the tower. Power Rangers don't want to let it go. They're going to start TP in. Gonna go with four. Yoku's gonna be the first target. They manage to block him off a little bit. The snowball follows up. An easy kill on Yoku. Next one. Oh, screen's gonna go for the kill on Big Num. Oh, the nice wand just barely keeps him alive. Again, Yoku very far forwards. And again, going back to the previous series we saw from them, where he was playing Huskar, right? Mm -hmm. 
had some serious issues going very far forward behind towers, and he always looks to play that aggressive role and you know get up in the face of the enemies. I don't know if it's if it's underestimating the opponent's damage output or overestimating the reactions of your teammates because you know hook shots down the tornado EMP was also down. They used it on the shadow fiend. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's just that like disconnect in it's a couple of seconds, you know, two or three seconds until those spells are actually up to able to be able to save the CK. Yeah, maybe he thought he was gonna get a relocate, but I don't know. I don't think I'm not even sure if the Wisp was level six at the time. This does seem to be an issue for Yoku, who didn't want to play offlane anymore. Right back when he was still on Empire. He and that that is something about priority. You can't just trade yourself as a carry one for one or something like yeah. that. And that's that's oftentimes Radiance the downside, I think, of transitioning attack. roles. It reminds me of like, you know, I, I primarily play offlane, but sometimes in pubs I have to play carry or something. And I usually go just out of like innate, that's what I'm used to, those one for one trade-offs, you know, especially if I can get an enemy core. But it's not worth it as a carry. And playing so far aggressive is getting them caught out. But now they're going to be able to catch Barrage, or maybe not. There's no follow-up just yet from Yoku. Now the Gyrocopter Ultimate's going to come in. Beautiful Snowball. No, big num. It's just saving this SF, and all the rest of his allies are going to go on Yoku here. They managed to get the relocate out. Now Chaos Knight. He Radiance tries to throw an illusion top. forward. It's That's going to be cleaned up pretty easily. There's a Fisher here from Cheshire Cat. Are they going to try and kill the Wisp? He's pretty low. Yeah, they just throw dead, yeah. all their nukes. Nice tornado EMP that's going to catch uh, three heroes. The snowball goes on to general. He's got no backup just yet. Yeah, Screen's coming in. Oh, and they've got the dust to be able to reveal him. Screen, he actually silences up Cheshire Cat, trying to stop some of these, but the ice shards is beautiful. Wears off soon, but he's already dead. Yeah. Cheshire Cat throws down the Echo Slam, knowing that it's worth the kill on general, who's just been spending all this game farming away. So the highest net worth hero is now down. That means Gyrocopter is going to be able to take over that lead soon. I mean, Gyrocopter, it, it doesn't feel like he's... It's one of these heroes where you don't see the massive impact he makes. It's like, right, he throws his ultimate down, it slows people a bit, he does a bit of damage here and there. But he's getting a lot of gold from these fights, even if it's just a little bit of chip damage from the flat cannon, a bit of rocket barrage onto certain heroes. That, that cooldown is zoning and deterring the rest of elements away from the tier 1. Definitely changed the fight and forced it into their favor. But he's really, really a valuable hero right now. The, the SF with mech completed, it's going to be even more difficult for Elements to play aggressively into this. So the first 50 minutes has been Elements running into Arcade, looking for picks, looking for kills. And they wanted to tie this up with the Orchid timing on Invoker. So they, they'd have aggression tied into more aggression. And they mm -hmm. go looking for kills in the jungle, Dyer's take control of the map a little bit attack. here. But if they have to fall back and farm now on the CK, which honestly he does, Oh. He doesn't get out the paralyzing cast, meaning J4 should be dying, or the mech, and the snowball is going to be able to save him, buying him time. They need three more seconds till the relocate back out. Screen still goes for the kill on J4 and gets it too, but it's now daytime, and he's going to be slowed down to the point where he won't get out of this one. Once again, a one for one trade off that is not favorable for elements. Like right there, three heroes can't kill a solo witch doctor. Sure enough, mech comes in and saves him at the end, but CK needs more items. It's 60 minutes in, he's got Treads, Drums, and a Helm of Iron Will, which I'm, I'm assuming is going to be the armor for him. Mm -hmm. But it's a rough situation if you have to fall back and farm as an aggressive hero like Chaos Knight, where, similar to a Wraith King, you just want to be straight up into these towers, pushing in as hard as you can. And also, you look at this dire team, who, who buys a mech? Who gets to sustain on this team? Again, Dyer's defensive abilities top. are close to none top. outside of that Wisp. They've got lots of initiation, aggression, on ways to enter the team fights, but if Arcade get a good Blink Echo, which honestly, look look at Cheshire Cat, this is what I'm talking about. The period of time where he's getting close to that Blink is here. J4 is going to be slowed down, the Snowball not, oh, just barely picks him up, but it's still not going to be enough. Now ZXC actually misses his hook shot, hits screen instead. Now the turnaround, both are low, and Barras tries to go for one of the kills, he'll get ZXC. While screen, well, he's in a precarious position right now, blocked out by both the Ice Shards and the Fisher turns around, goes for the silence, knows that he's dead anyway. Here's Gyro. Oh, in general, he does have face boots, but he's going to be able to get out and gets the invis down, and he will be able to survive completing that Orchid, which is incredibly important now. All right. Four elements, but there's still the issue that Arcade Power Rangers are much more powerful in team fights. So yeah, Cheshire Cat, they killed him, what, twice in the first eight minutes. And then for the following seven minutes, they just didn't Dyer's touch him at all. They, they couldn't catch fortified. him. 
And this is the scenario I was talking about. The first eight minutes, you don't worry about Earthshake a blink, but now he has it. At 18 minutes, it's honestly going to be so difficult for you, especially with a CK, Night Stalker, and Clockwork, who all converge onto one location, try and catch one hero and nuke them into oblivion. Like, here, CK stuns and runs. So, oh, look, 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 oh, no, There's Yoku. No he doesn't that. get out. They're going to try and go for the relocate play, but that'll be a sacrificial play by the Wisp. It's still a kill for Power Rangers. There's no way you make that play. I'm confused. That was a three-second stun. Shouldn't he have been able to TP out? Did he TP on to the same tower as someone else? Was it a three-second stun? I, I, I didn't see. Uh, from the Chaos Knight. Okay. I thought it was a, a three-second stun for the Chaos Bolt. Yeah, sure, he got hit by the Fissure, but it was like... Fissure, and then immediately after, it was the, also the, the Paralyzing Task. Dyer's middle tower. I mean, there's a tusk there as well. There's just so many stuns from Arcade. Yeah. And they give up the Wisp and they save the CK. I guess his armlet isn't too far away. I mean, if they were split pushing and it was that kind of commitment from um, Power Rangers for a Wisp kill, that would be worth it. But it's not even like they were really split pushing. They were just taking the enemy jungle. That just seems like a, an unnecessarily risky position. General's on the hunt. He's not going to get anyone, though. To go for that ghost walk, cold snap. He's got an urn charge as well, so there are very few heroes here that can kind of survive. I think SF is the only one that can actually stick around through that orchid, cold snap, urn, and then a tornado to finish. Mm -hmm. Even the gyrocopter with his S and Y. 1300 HP, he doesn't have the mech or anything to just keep him going through it. Armlet. Complete for the Chaos Knight. And he does have level 2 Phantasm. We'll see if that actually changes anything for elements, though. They're looking for a uh, relocate play. They do have lots of aggressive wards. Radiance bottom tower but they see nobody attack. on the map, really. Power Rangers, I think they know. It's just all important right now to stay grouped up against the Invoker, the Chaos Knight, uh, Wisp relocate. There's too many plays that could be had by elements when they're left with only one or two heroes in lanes, so. It's always really nice watching Arcade Power Rangers and how they distribute their farm, especially on their supports. Because J4, who is regularly the kind of greedier player, they've given that role to Bignum a little bit here. You know, he's, he's playing aggressively, getting kills and a ton of assists. He's, mm -hmm. he's four, two and 10. Glimmer Cape Arcanes are up, but J4 still has the space and time to say, you know what, I'll get a point booster. I'll build into Aghanim Scepter, even with buying all the wards and things like that. Doesn't need the utility if the Tusk and Shadowfiend have got the mech and glimmer between them. Hey, Strun. Snatched here before Power Rangers could actually stop anybody. Now, Cheshire Cat's going to go for the Fisher Block, most likely. Or he's just going to try and blink in, but oh, the tether out. Doesn't hit that Enchant Totem play. Maybe should have led with the Fisher on RMN, but he wanted that max damage on the Wisp. General still hasn't really made his mark on this game. 1-1-1. One, one, one. He's farming decently, but Invoker at this point, Quaswex especially, very good at controlling pushes into towers. You know, that, that was one of the reasons he was picked up to begin with two or three years ago. Quaswex, EMP Tornado. You stop people pushing your tier 1s and tier 2s very early on. Mm -hmm. But right here, he's split pushing. Radiant Trying to control the map and counteract what Arcade are doing. But the, the aggressive potential, uh, the aggressive potential Dyer's you get from Orchid, Urn, and I guess he's gonna head into shoot with him. It's uh, a little bit wasted, I feel. Snowball on Yoku. It's really not going to be follow up though. Elements did a decent job pushing. That's only because they used Phantasm though, that they were able to force Power Rangers back. Otherwise, I think they would have been uh, content with making some sort of trade off. So once SF and Gyro have BKB, how do elements actually deal with them in a the team fight? Because all of their initiation spells and tools kill the Gyro and SF. Tornado EMP, the Reality Rift with the Phantasm get illusions to surround Dyer's them. It's all magic target based, right? Mm -hmm. When these BKBs are, are up, the SF can stand and fight with a, a Requiem alone. Those Phantasm Dyer's illusions don't really do that much. Fallen. Not only that, they don't have any instant stuns. 
right? They have yeah. Hookshot as their best instant stun, which only lasts a second. I don't think you have the kind of coordination to be able to lead with Hookshot and get off, you know, the, the Chaos Bolt Radiant's before the hero is, is no longer stunned and gets off his BKB. So I, I think BKBs pretty much mean the end of elements. They won't be able to fight for at least like 20 minutes and they'll just have to push this super late game and see what happens. So now I'm wondering, General, I mentioned Shiva's on him because Radiant's of the plate mail, if that's an AC. Attack. If you just go for that physical damage output, give the Phantasm Illusion a little more firepower as well. There's a blink on bottom lane. Yoku is going to be relocated out, but they do have... Oh, never mind. Thought for a second that Snowball was on ZXC, but no such luck. Ice Shards wasn't available to block him out, so they're just going to go for the quick kill on the Wisp. Yes, who does have an Invis, invis rune. Uh, nope, that's not the plan. Who does have an Invis rune. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, I mean, I know they Ignore that. Ignore that, Cap. It didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know there's dust, but, you know, you can at least try. Your Invis Rune is just going to run out. Eh, yeah, well. We'll see. Reminds me of the first time I ever saw... Uh, oh, I can't remember who it was now. I'm sure it was, like, J4 or someone. When they bought a Shadow Blade on Whispers, they were relocating back. And they <laughs> Shadow Bladed away. Uh-huh. Not this time. And they get some sort of opening here. The Tier 2 Tower. Oh, they're going to be able to jump it. See if they can actually get the tower plus these kills. Cheshire Cat is definitely going down. It looks like J4 is also going to be caught. Turn as the Ice Shards comes out, does block out beautifully in the cask. Stalls up the rest of the elements. So they only get the Tier 2 and that one kill. That needed to be a bigger play for elements. And it looks like they may still try and force it. General's not ready to go, though, with any of his spells. Tornado EMP coming up in five seconds, but the Chaos Knight's ready to go. Barsh gets off his ultimate, and he will just barely survive off the back of a veil coming out from Big Num. That glimmer timing. Oh, Tornado! Barsh, he's dead! Oh, my God. I can't believe he hit that one. In between the ranks, threading the needle there, General. Okay, that, that's a, now that's a play. That's a play. And that was the, the first uh, round of BKB, and the SF still died. Yeah. I like what Big Num did there, though. He had Snowball and maybe could have gone onto ZXC's Clockwork, but he held it and held it, realizing the potential for elements to actually come back into that fight. So it's Barash on his Shadow Fiend. A little bit too ballsy there. Did did CK get the extra illusion? Uh, I think so. It felt like uh, he did. A, he did a ton of damage. He a cat. Okay, okay. There's another kill. General has finally flicked that switch and said, "You know what? It's time to battle. I've got my Shiva's Guard coming in on the courier." Radiant's bottom oh, on AC. tower is under attack. Radiant's See how that works for him. I kind of missed the Ferrari Wex in both of where he went like Desolator AC and just went full minus armor. Yeah. So you transition really nicely from like magic disruption Dyer's top into tower that physical damage attack. output. Yeah. Because the it would essentially be if you went Orchid AC, it would be essentially the same as uh, Queen of Pain. Yeah. You know, that transition into uh, more of a physical damage dealer. Just fancy. BKB coming up soon for the Chaos Knight, so that'll help uh, move things a bit more in their favor. But I think, really, with the completed BKBs on Power Rangers, elements need to just focus on farming right now and getting that Axe on Night Stalker. Now, that is one factor that we haven't actually talked about. Elements do have a significant advantage when it comes to um, forcing the fights that they want to take, right? Because they should always have a vision advantage. And in that regard, that's actually a huge advantage when you start pushing past 35 minutes. Oh yeah, for sure. That's when the BKBs get lower in the cooldown, and that's when that Night Stalker Axe Jam definitely kicks in with both Clockwork and Invoker being able to charge people down, but... This gyrocopter has been very quiet the past five or six minutes. Um, they stamp it out instantly there as they pop their heads into the Roche pit. They still may be able to find something though. Elements start packing themselves away, but a good Fisher block that's also going to be able to keep RMN in. They get the hook shot, being able to lock down the Earthshaker, but he just turns around and throws out the Echo Sam. That's going to be two down. A good relocate save out from the Wisp that will be able to pardon the Chaos Knight. Meanwhile, the top lane, General's going at it. Throws down the alacrity and starts trying to take down this tier three tower while they wait out the Wisp relocate. He's going to be caught here. The uh, Shiva's EMP does a decent amount of damage, but the, with the gyrocopter there, 
Tornado. He's still going to be going down unless he gets a beautiful four-man tornado. Might be able to get away. He phase boots. Oh, oh, that final fish of the revenge of Cheshire Cat. Is that enough? Not enough of General's Invoker. I, I just want to go back to that relocate, though. How did RMN get the relocate off in the middle of three people throwing stuns out? Honestly, that, that's a godlike play. Timing it so that the Fisher, Echo Slam, the Snowball, nothing hits him. And he gets the relocate on the Curse Knight out. Pretty gorgeous to watch. Shadow Blade for your task now, though. Nope. There goes General. I mean, the split pushing aspect, the fact that he's brought the tier 3 tower down to like half HP. I mean, that's an impressive push forward for elements when I really didn't see them being able to take any objectives for the next 10 minutes. Yeah, they stopped Roshan from happening with one rocket flare, realizing that Arcade will probably head into there. They lose out on the fight at mid, and they do lose General up at top, so it was the, the reward they get really didn't outweigh the risk, as they do get punished quite heavily for it. Yeah, it feels like uh, uh, Arcade Power Rangers have... Like, they've been able to finish up their build, and we were just kind of, like, waiting for that hammer to drop, you know? Just the, that one team fight that would ensure that Power Rangers, you know, unequivocally take control of the map and are ahead in this game. And yet, Elements have always found the small openings to be able to just, like, keep that hammer from actually dropping on their heads. Let's see if they can stop this one, though. Yoku. Oh, he backs up at the right time. Bignum really wanted that pickoff. If they could have gotten that kill... Or at least forced out the relocate. Maybe they could have gone and done Roshan. Oh, blink echo. Oh, well, the Echo Slam. They can actually control RMN. He doesn't have Echo Slam, but they still take down the Wisp. ZXC, though, managed to interrupt the Gyrocopter. Still, J4 deals out a lot of damage to Yoko. In fact, he's going to be able to turn this around. J4 doesn't go down at all. Keeps himself alive. General gets a good amount of damage out from the EMP Shivas, but it's still not enough. Power Rangers are looking pretty damn healthy, even if they are looking lackluster in mana. Not expecting that at all. I, I thought he had Echo there. The way he was posi uh, positioning himself up on the high ground, I thought, right, blink Echo in the middle of both of them. But the Chaos Knight just wasn't ready. He was looking elsewhere, maybe buying something in the shop, and got his BKB off a little bit too late. But just look at that level 11 Witch Doctor at Death Ward. Almost solo killing that, the Chaos Knight. Yeah, that was an absurd amount of damage. I can't believe he was doing that much. Our Chaos Knight only has 14 armor, and then I guess if he's near the... Um, Near the SF that goes down to um, that goes down to eight armor, so I guess we could see why the Witch Doctor Death Ward was able to deal that much damage to him, but it was still a bit surprising to me. Yeah, very rough stuff. I mean, we always look at this Wisp being partnered with the CK and kind of in our heads buffing up the CK beyond his natural means, right? We always think about the overcharged tether and the heal coming through. And for Curse Knights alone, he's just not that strong. Now you're looking at the gyro with close to 4,000 gold saved up. In BKB S and Y phase, he's gone a bit of stats, a bit of survivability. What's next? The Dyer's butterfly is a really good item against the CK and the invoker. Boom, Could head into that evasion if he wants to. Damage output, they're not really lacking. Like you said, with presence of the Dark Lord, the minus armor is good. Death Ward is there. They've got big team fight ultis to throw out. It's, it's still 30 minutes in there. Magic damage is a good chunk of their team fight capability right now. Yeah. I don't necessarily think he needs physical damage. Whereas I'd be down with Butterfly. On, on both of them, actually. On the SF as well, yeah. The SF uh, does pick up a Yasha. So, that's kind of interesting. Uh, Manta, he could get rid of the Silence. Manta Dodge, the Chaos Bolt. Does it? It doesn't. Does it get rid of cold snap? No. No, I, I didn't think it did. I I guess if you're BKBing, like you, you want to use your BKB requiem against the chaos knight, right? Yeah. When he jumps on you, he'll stun slash reality rift and phantasm, and you want to requiem all of his illusions. And then you'll have like the manta style afterwards for like you said the orchid and the silence from night stalker just to try and dispel that. Relocate up to the top lane. They throw down a counter ward. And they see Bignum pull him back into that counter ward range and will be able to take him out. They're gonna look for more. Oh. They didn't finish him off fast enough, and he will be able to get off the snowball. Still dead, though. Just tries to get damage on the RMN. They got greedy and really wanted to get, catch uh, J4. As you can see, ZXZ actually hoped to be able to get that, but ends up hook shutting the creep wave instead. What does Yoko go into next? The CK we've often seen you know, the full stats builds. 
And you go into uh, SNY and things along those lines. A heart maybe a little bit later on. But with a BKB drums armlet. Survive as long as he can as J4 is screwed up on the top lane. Yeah, cold snap. And that is the end of the Witch Doctor. 800 gold away from his axe though. But yeah, Chaos Knight, I guess heart wouldn't be a bad option here. But I really feel they need an AC. And there's no one else really going to be able to get into that. Mm -hmm. Invoker wants Ags and then maybe a Hex. Once again, we're going to have the uh, Aghanim's build on the Invoker. We are, uh, I mean, this is proven to be a game that's going to go pretty late. Jarcopter's going to sack his Aegis here against the Invoker. Who will be able to get away with Ghost Walk before the uh, Shishir Cat and Big Num can make their counter initiation? Arcade really need to start closing this map out a bit. There's still a tier one of a top, which they're definitely moving into now. Well, they had this great lead, and my F8 key doesn't work. What was their net worth lead? Yeah, th they had, what, a 4,000 lead, they dropped it, Elements brought it back down to zero, and then they've, over the past Dyer's three, four minutes, they've been slowly dragging things back into their court. Mm -hmm. But there was that period of two or three minutes where elements were allowed to farm, allowed to push across the map, and General got a lot of money in his in his pockets. So now you definitely see Arcade reacting quite heavily to this. They're grouping up, realizing they're stronger in numbers. They've still got their BKBs up, which I thought honestly would be Radiance middle the, uh, the ending attack. for elements. But with the butterfly on Gyro now, attack. he's close to untouchable. Radiant structures Yag's coming in pretty soon for the Witch Doctor as well. He only needs another 500 Dyer's gold now. But Radiant's we have the Ag's gem up for the Night Stalker. They could actually push back Power Rangers, force them to kind of reset, and then take control of the map and just kill all these uh, aggressive counter wards that Power Rangers Radiant's had up. Tower is under attack. I was wondering if Yoku went for the ballsy play and actually pushed mid tier 3, but. Doesn't pop Phantasm, realizes that they've all left that top lane. Uh, moving down towards mid. So Elements will actually position themselves pretty well here. A three-man group if General moves up towards the rest of his teammates is Big Num. Not the neck of the woods you want to be in, I don't think. There's oh. four Elements heroes around. Yeah, they think this is just a simple pickoff, but nope. As ZXC comes in, is able to get off a beautiful hook shot, stalling up. Big Num will be able to get that one kill. Echo Slam whiffs there, does manage to give the Invoker in the end, but it's still Elements. Gonna be able to get out of this scenario, looks like they still have the mech up, you but can't. oh, it, no, it doesn't actually save the Chaos Knight. And now Gyrocopter's gonna be able to go for more. He's looking for a tether away, but that's not gonna happen either. Gyrocopter gets the triple kill. He was just too damn big. He deals so much damage. Yeah, I thought I was over-exaggerating when I said the gyro was untouchable, but my god, look at that beast. Yeah, I guess so. He's become Cheshire Cat as well with like... Consistent three four-man fishers. This guy's been on the money. Why didn't... I mean, they had more. the Phantasm the whole entire time. Why didn't he pop it in that fight? I don't know. I mean, he popped it towards the tail end when he tried to, like, do the armlet and then Phantasm maneuver that we saw him do earlier. I... With this team, I honestly think there's a big... Like, the only way I see it is there's a disconnect between actual game captain and game calls mm -hmm. and individual players, especially Yoku. Because he definitely makes some moves where you can see the merit in it. But the like all four of the other players don't follow through with it. So I don't know if he's like saying, let's go boys, and someone else is saying, no, let's back up, and he doesn't follow the actual call. Because there are definitely some situations where he's fighting when the rest of the team wants to back up, and he's he's running when maybe they should fight. He's still you going for that heart, though. I think he's holding on to it in some scenarios because the flat cannon is going on from the gyrocopter. It doesn't feel like... The, the right idea, but what if he, th he he's thinking, if I pop Phantasm here, Jarcopter, because he's got BKB, gets all his flat cannon shots off, and then my illusions are dead. I, I Maybe, but even one round of flat cannon, will that kill all the illusions? It'll take them low, but you'll still have that initial second and a half, two seconds, where, oh god, what's the real Chaos Knight? Where is he? Mm -hmm. And maybe you can run yourself away. But yeah, maybe that's the way he's looking at things. He's nearly done with his heart now as well. Oh, the relocate up the top lane. Barsh is forced to pop his BKB and TP out. How do they stop BKBs? Big num. 
He's coming in with his smoke. The rest of Power Rangers are going to rotate through the jungle. See who they can catch, but the answer is nobody. Elements of all TP the way home. Waiting on the next Roshan. Potential spawn time starting in 30 seconds. It's another Axe coming in, the Invoker. 500 gold till he has that. Neither team has amazing vision here. There's some decent warding out from the Radiant, but they don't see anything in their own jungle, any aggressive movements from elements like this single Ford Spirit bottom lane is the only real indication of what the Dire are doing, but look at where Screen is. Running around, and I, I guess for the Dire it's a little bit easier for them to play Blade Gem Axe and the Night Storm and go and de ward everything. But he's not playing some ward of his own. Alright, the push uphill. Tier 3 tower is going to be the target here. Jump in, Echo Slam immediately onto screen. They're just going to throw everything they have to pop the one hero and take away his gem. If they can cleanly get out from there, the Chaos Knight coming in from behind with the help of the Wiz relocate, but the ultimate's going to go down from Barge. They will be able to take down RMN, and Yoku, he's just going to die to this Witch Doctor ultimate. As now General gets off a beautiful combination, but it's only his damage that gets laid out. He kills one hero, brings the rest to half, but there is no follow-up. Everyone else from Elements has died in Clockwork. He is nowhere to be found. He already threw his combination out. Can't do much to help General anymore. Okay, yeah, CK illusions don't exist when all of these heroes are throwing their spells out. Cask, flat cannon, raises, right click, presence the Dark Lord giving that minus armor as well. They're now gonna have uh, an MKB for the gyrocopter as soon as they back down, but they just want to fight inside of Element's base, so they're gonna go for more. General oh. can't buy back, he's dead for a minute. This is a second lane of Rax, if not just game over. Mm -hmm. Dyer's When's Clockwork Hook shot fallen. coming up? Four seconds. But he's, even that uh, is He's just gonna be caught by Big Num. Doesn't realize it, but he's going to be chain stunned down. RMN trying to heal him up. ZXC barely surviving. Now the Gyrocopter Ultimate's going to come in, though. And Gyrocopter does so much damage. Fortunately, the Force Staff does get him back. And now he hookshots back in. Go. Go. Got the blade. Now, oh, he stops the TP, too. Gyrocopter's not going anywhere, but he'll just turn and kill ZXC. <laughs> and the problem is, Elements. They actually have the damage to catch recovery. It looks like they will be able to catch him with the uh, Reality Rift and take him down slowly but surely. Even with the misses. Fades the crit hit. Oh, Big drops. Num, you cheeky devil. If you had been able to get off the snowball, you could have killed Screen, but he doesn't react fast enough, and he gives the gem back to Elements. Reclaimed gem. He does buy his BKB, and the fact they take two lanes of racks, the amount of money they get completely outweighs the money they give away there. Like, it's a, a 4,000 gold swing for Elements, gaining a ton of cash for killing off these heroes. But taking two full lanes, it's like a 20k net worth lead here for Arcade. As they get a Scardi fully done for the SF. BKB on your tusk now. So all of them becoming incredibly difficult to kill. And Cheshire Cat! I looked at him eight minutes in and thought, okay, they're focusing you pretty hard. It's irritating. But he's shown time and time again that he can come back from annoying situations. Shadowblade blink BOTs for staff. So much mobility. Oh, the Sun Shrek just trying to reveal. General knows what's going to be coming in. He wants to make sure there's no opportunity for Elements to actually uh, lose this Aegis. So he needed to get the Tornado onto Cheshire Cat, and that will push back Power Rangers from stopping Roshan. Even the clockwork is moving forward. Trying to catch someone. J4 is blocked off a little bit by those neutral creeps. So hook shots. Yeah, that was the right spot, but the Blink Dagger had already gone out from the Earthshaker. Now they've got to deal with this pesky push top lane and mid. Power Rangers, or rather, sorry, Elements have actually stalled this game up for probably another five minutes with that claim of the Aegis, but Power Rangers don't have to do anything. They could just sit back, lit the mid and top lane, constantly push in, and wait until that Aegis expires. Or they can go for the perhaps riskier route and try and go for a five-man smoke initiation. I mean, if they can get the initial stuns down onto Yoku's Chaos Knight, even with 3,167 HP, he's still going to get taken down pretty low. And that's the thing, if you burst him down to a third of his HP instantly, which they're looking to do... Oh, boy, that is not the time for a pause. 
Okay, Barash has been scouted. They know the Shadow Fiend is there. Big Num invisible. So this this comes down to Yoku and what he does next, right? Because you can give your initial life away and say, screw it. I'll try and do as much damage as I can initially, and I'll wait for my second life to BKB Reality Rift and go in and actually fight. Or if he pops everything initially and c tries to keep the Aegis for later. I'm pretty sure. I, I I personally would say just pop the BKB and Reality yeah. Rift. As soon as you see the SF, it's like you, you go in. Yeah. But then you're looking at Cheshire Cat's positioning. Uh, like, this is the situation, right? If Yoku pops Reality Rift first because he sees the SF, and Yoku and uh, Cheshire Cat gets the Blink Reality, uh, uh, Blink Echo Slam into the middle of that, mm -hmm. Yoku probably dies the first time and then dies the second time even during his BKB. Oh, the Night Sucker has the gem, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they see Cheshire Cat. Oh, they do. All right, so both teams have all information now. Uh, I don't know what that giant arrow is. Get the fuck out of here, boys. We're going to push bottom lane. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Cheshire Cat... I'm pretty sure his play is to jump screen just right away. Just blink echo slam. And try and do your full combination. Kill him. Possibly take the gem and four staff out. But then there's a clear line for ZXC to hook shot. Oh, four seconds. Five seconds. Until hook shot. Because I think Cheshire Cat's just like... He knows he's fully committed, right? I've been rustled. Unless, unless he blinks back, right? He could, he could potentially... They could make the defensive play. They could ice shards defensively. They could uh, blink back and Fisher defensively. They could actually create, you know, they could actually create this perfect wall. You know, Big Num, Ice Shards, and then Fisher to line up with the Ice Shards. And they could just, like, block off, like, half of this ramp. Or Shishir Cat could even just blink to this side and block off the full ramp. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's amazing that Power Rangers actually have the ability when they are this, like, pretty much integrated into a team fight that they could potentially just back out with only probably one hero lost. Who would they lose? Big Num? Probably Big Num. Though he's invis right now, so... It's either Big Num or Cheshire Cat. <laughs> one of them gets caught by the reality rift, I think, of the Chaos Knight. Big Num only just popped his Shadow Blade. Do I guess you didn't... Like, neither of us saw whether his smoke popped yeah, I mean, before. two seconds... Two seconds, I, I'm pretty sure he was back by, like, the trees farther down. Yeah, I guess I mean, so. he, he moves pretty fast in that Shadow Blade form, so. Yeah. He, uh, he, what he a time for that gyrocopter yeah. DDC, though. No recovery. Where's General standing? All the way at top. He's just used his tornado, actually. Oh, that's unfortunate. Because that's a... <laughs> That's this is like the only hero that'd be able to respond pretty well at this kind of distance. Uh, when he got Ags, tornado goes what like thirty six hundred range? Yeah. How absurd! I'm gonna hit you from outside your base into your fountain. A tornado strike. His EMP burns six hundred and twenty five mana. That's always fun when you're an Earthshaker with 750 mana pool. Yeah, I was, I was just about to scroll through all these heroes and like, how many heroes pretty much lose all offensive capability if they get hit by an EMP? Well, what? that'd be Tusk, Tusk and Earthshaker yes. pretty much, yeah. yeah. Gyrocopter, uh, probably, oh, actually his spells are so cheap. It was always the worst feeling when you're playing like a Bristleback and you're against an yeah. EMP Tornado Invoker. Can we talk about the fact that Gyrocopter's spells are extraordinarily cheap and he doesn't have a bad mana pool? Um, why? I, I mean, this just just seems so unfair. Like, how could Gyrocopter actually spam out? He could probably almost spam out Rocket Barrage indefinitely. You know, like he's, he's with his with his mana regen that he has, probably. His int gain is two point one. Like that's that's good even for some int heroes, honestly. Yeah, like SF is pretty mana independent. He's got two mana per second. There are two intel. Who are the highest man uh, int gain heroes in the game? Like Pugna Enigma or something? Pugna. Uh, I, know, I know Enigma's OD. like third. Is Odi up there? Probably not. Dota 2 int gain. Table of hero attributes. If it bloody loads. Come on. Um, can we sort this please? Oh, Invoker's at the top with four. 
He got buffed. Oh yeah. Forgot about that. So yeah, invoke. I thought I I remember Pugna being up at the top, but it's Invoker, Pugna, Skyrath, Dazzle, Enigma, OD. Invoker is four intelligence per level. That yeah. actually makes him pretty insane late game hero now. If you think about it, because he gets to what twenty two with eggs, and he has that deafening blast. That's pretty insane. Twenty five without eggs, and just the levels are benefiting his damage so much. Four damage per level. Gyrocopter. That is some sort of script. What's he doing? Not on the map. Oh. I see. Yeah, I had a mate who used to have a dinosaur macro. And it would draw a dinosaur look like a T-Rex on the map. <laughs> that, that made us giggle for hours. How do you do it? How, how, are, you, how are you such a good drawer? No, I'm not really. Is recovery coming back? Coming back. Nobody knows. We had some do good pauses last night. Do do. Fifteen-minute pauses where the only message between people was "sec." <laughs> 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 nobody what the asking. Hell? Nobody asking like, "Hey, what's up? What's happening?" Just "sec." Oh no no. In in the first game I cast last night, uh, Spin to Win, the Danish team, they paused like two minutes in. We need a couple of minutes. One of our teammates needs to rewire something. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, look at this. Gyro. That's amazing. That is amazing. I guess he's just got like uh, a macro tool where yeah, he, he types in. Types whatever he wants. It's pretty cool. At least we aren't uh, casting the uh, D2CL charity magic. And I only say that because I, I'm really enjoying that tournament. But I'm only saying that because I'm reading the Skype log right now. And two games have gone to, can you guess what, Moan? Captain's Draft. Yeah, because you read the Skype log. <laughs> no, I, no, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't do anything. But Captain's Draft. I, I, like, how the how hell does, is th that? out of all the fun modes that you could have gone, you go for, like, the second. People like, want to win. The second least fun mode, Captain's Draft. People, uh. people really, really want to win. I could like I can fully understand banning out one v one solo mid and mid only right, but not playing things like ARDM and reverse captains mode. The the whole point is or ability draft. ability draft. We haven't done an ability draft game yet. It was pretty sad. We did uh, two ARDMs. We did uh, a least played. That was actually the very first game. It was not a good mode to introduce the tournament. Least played. <laughs> you know what resolution got to play? Doom. Oh really? <laughs> that was on his least played list. Excellent. Doom. That's good. I for was him. just like, oh, okay. Uh, I really want to ask Cheshire Cat how he does that because I want it. Can I all chat? What else did we play? Am I allowed to all chat? Probably not, right? Yeah. I'll just add him on Steam. All random. That was the other one. I uh, played it all random. But like the ARTM games, it was actually like both teams were just like, we just want to play ARDM. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even like try and go through the banning. They're, they're both like, ARTM? Yeah, sure, that sounds seems good. Seems good. <laughs> it was like, yeah. And it was, uh, it was, I mean, it's a lot of fun to cast ARDM games, but. I, I Ability draft, I think, would be so much fun because you just have so much time to theory craft the potential abilities that people want to go for, and you could talk about the intricacies of block picking, I mean. It's much more strategic than ARDM, where it's like, oh, I've got a random hero, <laughs> I'm going I'm to buy Shadowblade, Midas, and Vanguard. Should I get an Aghanim? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we used to play it so much in in-house leagues, where it would literally you just follow the algorithm, Midas, Shadowblade, Aghanims, because they fit every single hero. Yeah. Maybe a blink, maybe a blink, but like treads as well, throw that in there. Yeah, we saw a lot of minuses. A lot of minuses. Some eggs. D Dendi. Dendi had a star performance on Rubik for the first 10 minutes of the game. Oh, did he now? And then he died, lost his Rubik, and Navi lost the game. But it was, an, it was a nice way to, like, watch Navi, I guess. 
with the classic Rubik Dendy mid. I'm sure Cheshire Cat is not going to add me on Steam. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, who Who is this guy? All I want is the macro. Give it to me. Is there a, right, is there a time nice. limit on pausing? Yes, there is. We need to unpause in one minute. Good call, whoever did that. All right, I, I should, I should stop. The admin. Oh, look, someone added you to the friends list. Yeah, I, I, I decided to try and see if uh, Shusha Cat was on my friends list, but he's not. Do 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 do. do. Well, I hope you guys are all enjoying the Dota Pits closed qualifier for the European Division brought to you by G2A.com! The best video game store ever! What do you think about the My Nuts thing? He was fast as lightning. <laughs> what do you think about My Nuts being kicked from Alliance? It was cheap as duck. He was solid as a rock. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, <a> stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> he just tweeted oh. out, Woo, free agent a couple days before roster locks. At least I'm my nuts again. That is the worst, by the way. Some of these players getting uh, put into free agent just before roster locks come in. It's like, what do you even do? What do you do with your life? Nah, I'm not you sure. just gotta like real quickly try and find a team, but you're probably not gonna be that satisfied. You know? I mean, I think the bigger question is, did Alliance have this planned beforehand? Who do they have to go in his slot as well? Like who, d who do they bring in? Yeah, they just, said, they just said stand in. Like, do they even know what they're... Oh, okay, well, oh, that's right. We had a game. Melanchai is going to be gone on. Yoku is going to be the target of Big Num, but he's not popping his BKB just yet. It looks like he's going to sack this first life and force RK Power Rangers trying to go into him, but it's taken a long time. He's finally going to go down. Round two coming up. Barash He's going to try and get off the ultimate here for the BKB. Oh, they actually are brought him down to half health before the BKB goes off. And Yoku's got to back himself all the way back to Fountain. That was a pretty decent... Oh, ZXE's going to be able to catch this year, Cat. Go full staff. Yeah, four staff, but General's there. Now they're going to have to relocate. They're going to re-engage. Going on J4. Catch him out. That's going to be a quick kill. Cheshire oh, Cat does get out, though. Meanwhile, so, the gyro is still disconnected. Power Rangers, they lose the fight, but they claim the Aegis. I mean, I, I don't think they're going to be too upset with that. Gyra's especially considering the fact that you said the gyrocopter is still disconnected. And there's still two lanes of ranks ahead. They pop that BKB over that Chaos Knight. And now when they look at it, you know, the next fight they go into is going to be relatively simple. There's Barash. He's got his BKB and his Manta style here. Yeah, Bars could just turn and fight against General. He's going to get a lot of damage oh, out. Oh, hit. 60 HP. That's all that's left. But ZXE, good for Staff and Cogs. That'll actually defend against the Gyrocopter, who's about to catch him with that Gyre's ultimate. General has no TP here. General. Hook shot away. Clockwork. He gets out. Nice play. Here. No random Fisher or anything like that to catch the Invoker. And run around. Why, why is he? Uh, yes. Why is he still here? I'm not sure. Head home. Head home, General. Okay, that's because they actually want to make a relocate play here. Gets the ice wall down, trying to run himself away from Barash, and does successfully do so. Three seconds done, and now Barash is just going to be controlled up by Yoko. A Fisher separates both the Wisp and the Chaos Knight, but they still get the kill. And General. Oh, he catches Cheshire Cat. That was after the invis, so now Cheshire Cat. He only has half of his Shadow Blade to get laid down, but still okay. For a second there, I expected it to purge away the Shadow Blade, much like the, it does the to Invis runes, but yeah. not working out. ZXC, hookshot only just now off cooldown, so no luck there. Big Num, he's going to find the initiation on a general here, and he does have the follow-up of the Gyrocopter, whoever's controlling him. Flat cannon shots start coming in. Got the ultimate, and they'll catch general. He's dead. 
80 seconds on the sidelines. Seems pretty clear that Jay Force is the one controlling the gyrocopter. Seeing as his hero stops moving whenever gyrocopter is going around. Screen. Trying to loop himself around. They, they do know you're there. not have relocate for five seconds. Well, they just saw him devour the observer, so they know he's actually lurking behind them somewhere. And now they actually see him. Yeah, they got a hook shot ready to go. Heroes grouped up. This would be a good time for initiation. Relocate through the side, but Cheshire Cat immediately hits the Echo Slam to control the Yoku up. They're going to be able to take him down if they're not careful. Hookshot stalls up the gyrocopter, but Yoku may still die to Cheshire Cat. He's got the armlet toggle, able to go down, and Chan Totem and Big Num, maybe combined they can take down the Yoku. He gets off an armlet toggle again, but still dies. <laughs> the balls of steel in that Chaos Knight. You can see Cheshire Cat, like, you know, weighing up. Should I punch him? He's going to armlet toggle. Should I try and go for it now? He went for the Enchant Totem play, expecting the armor toggle, but Yoku stood his ground and just waited it out. Still drops in the end, but they bought time for General's Invoker to maybe respawn in time to defend his bot racks. Maybe. Because they uh, so they still have a glyph, though they are dealing with a lot of damage coming out here from the gyro. With no BKB on the gyrocopter, because it was on cooldown for a little while. They maybe could have actually forced a fight if they want to double buyback, but I can understand why they didn't. Looks like uh, a clean getaway here. Elements pretty desperate to catch somebody, but I don't think it's going to happen. At most, Bigna may die, but it's not going to be the biggest loss in the world. Still has a Shadow Blade, so it looks like he's good. They're crossing the river pretty well here at Elements. J4. Kind of surprising. J4 is going to be caught. Relocate. They're going to go for Barash. Hookshot lands on J4. Quick kill there, but Barash actually managed to get off the ultimate, so maybe it's not so fast. J4 is surviving. The snowball actually brings him in. They're going to turn on to Barash, but he doesn't seem to care. Meanwhile, the Jarocopter is getting out his damage with the flat cannon shots. That is helping to destroy, but oh man, that Witch Doctor ultimate is just going to town and destroys the Chaos Knight. J4 dies, but Elements call it GG. Last ditch effort for them there. I mean, General's Invoker, you know, okay, he farmed well. I just don't think he had the early game impact that really required from him to get them into the swing of things. And just, yeah, the, uh, the aggressive draft from Elements with no defensive play available. If things went wrong in the first 10 minutes, it was just going to spiral out of control, really. So, that's game number one in this best of three. We'll see whether or not the gyrocopter comes back for game number two as we're going to have a short break before then.